Welcome to this week's field trip. Um, this week I'm with Tana Allred, who's an artist and interior designer who lives here in Star Valley, Wyoming, and grew up here in Wyoming. Um, actually grew up just in Idaho, didn't you? Mm -hmm. So, but we're gonna talk to her and she's gonna show us what she does um, and also kind of tell us how she got started in all of that and we're, fell into this career. So you can learn about someone interesting from Wyoming that uh, is in the world of art. So, hello, Tana. Hi. <laughs> um, I guess tell us, tell the kids where you grew up in relation to Wyoming here. Okay, so I grew up about 40 minutes away on the Idaho border on a dairy farm. I grew up um, just with cows and horses and throwing hay and doing labor, moving sprinkler pipe, and um, that's what we did. That's the way I grew up, so. And I took the kids last year to Drainy Dairy, to your dad's dairy. Oh. It's still working. So okay, yes, For still. those that watched it, they knew where you grew up. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, and um, yep, grew up there and uh, went to college, moved to Colorado and to South Carolina for a little while, but we're back now. Living here in Wyoming, Star mm -hmm. Valley. And if you guys remember, the canyon that Drainy Dairy sits in, where she grew up, faces the Wyoming border. So you kind of pop out into Wyoming. So you went to school in Wyoming. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The border was about five miles away. I like to run, so that was a good marker. Run to the state line, run back home. <laughs> <laughs> so you're from Idaho, but kind of from Wyoming at the same time. Right. We really didn't have a way. It was over a mountain pass to go. It was a lot easier to come to Wyoming than to go to the Idaho schools. Okay. So. Okay. So tell us about when you were a kid, um, when you started thinking about art, I guess. I like to say art found me. I didn't choose art. <laughs> it chose me. Um, my sister gave me a horse encyclopedia. I love horses. I still do. Um, and that it just had different breeds of books and information about horses is very, very boring as an encyclopedia, but I, um, somehow got my hands on some drawing paper. In fact, I think a friend gave me some nice pencils to me for my birthday and I was in elementary school. Hmm. And so I um, just started playing with those and I started teaching myself how to draw by um, the different horse breeds in the encyclopedia. Just kind of a funny way to start. I loved it. Do you so. still have any of those old drawings of the horses? <laughs> I, I can't find them. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I used to have one, but I don't have, I'm not sure where that's at <clears throat> now, so. So where did it go from there, I guess, getting into this world of art? Um, well, I kept doing it. Um, I was a pretty quiet kid and I loved to just read and draw or be outside. So uh, it kind of struck me when my dad picked it up and he looked at it and he went to my uncle who was over for the day and he said, come look at this. <laughs> like. Yeah, Tana can draw, <laughs> you know, sort of thing. And my parents didn't really know what to do with me either, you know. It, I just loved to draw. I didn't have any paints. I actually did not pick up painting until college. Mm. Even in high school, they didn't have a lot of the supplies and things for painting. But I just drew, and I drew, and I drew. Mm. And then off to college, and... Mm -hmm. I um, submitted a portfolio and got a small art scholarship to a smaller school in Idaho and um, <clears throat> at the time and I just, I really, I thought about other careers but I really couldn't stop doing art. Mm -hmm. So um, I got my bachelor's degree in oil painting. Hmm. So Interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I guess on that note, do you want to talk to them about oil painting and 
what you do with it, and then we'll kind of look at some other types of art you get, you're into. Um, do you want to just do like equipment? Sure. Or okay. Just basic things like that. Okay, so this is a very actually really simple setup for. Um, I got married in college, and my husband is a builder, and we didn't have any money, so <laughs> he looked at a picture <laughs> on the internet, and he built this easel. This is an easel. This is a tabaret, and this is where I mix all of my paints. <clears throat> my husband did not build this. <laughs> we bought it later, but... But this easel, this yes. holds your paintings? Yes. So this slides up uh -huh. and holds the painting there? Yeah. It's adjustable. So these knobs, there's much more sophisticated setups, but this has always worked. So all of these parts are adjustable. I've lost <laughs> parts of it over the years, but you know, it's just... So you can have just about any size canvas on there you want. Uh-huh. And the, you always try, if you're putting something on an easel, if you raise your arm and put it straight in front of you, mm -hmm. it should be in the center of your canvas. Hmm. And that's how high you try to adjust it with your painting. Hmm. And so this can go way up to this part. Now there's the key. Also that whole thing back there slides too. Yeah. You can keep moving this around and you can get a pretty big canvas on there. Do you stretch so, your own canvases? No. <laughs> you just buy them? <laughs> yes. Uh, they did that in college and professor actually just finally took over because my <laughs> hands were not, I couldn't get it tight enough. And so it, it takes really, really strong hands to yeah. grip and staple and get it really, really tight. And so I just buy my canvases. Okay. But some people swear by stretching your own because you can do it your own way and you can build um, the back of the canvases, you know, you can structure those however you would like. They so usually they're... have these are all kiln dried wood. Mm -hmm. um, even if, if you buy it or make it or whatever. But canvases are usually made out of cotton or linen. Linen's heavier. Uh, cotton's a little more affordable. I don't know if one lasts longer than the other, but the thing about oil paints is, you know, you've got hundreds of years of a life, yeah. you know, when it's done. So hopefully people want to keep it around that long, I guess. What are the different types of uh, brushes there you have? Okay, so there's a million different kinds of brushes. The, what they have is a different shape. Mm -hmm. And they're made of different things. If you're doing heavier paints, oil paints, or acrylics, you're going to want hog hair bristle mm -hmm. brushes. Um, and I actually just always get flat brushes. This one's been worn and it's starting to get rounded on the edges. You can buy them rounded, but I figure they'll eventually get rounded anyway <laughs> if you use them. So um, I always buy flat brushes, except these. this is a fan brush. Sometimes you can do blending really well with this, but for the most part, you just, to start out, all you need is flat brushes in different sizes. Um, and that'll cover everything for you. So you don't really need to get fancy with it. Okay, so just a simple set of brushes mm -hmm. for oil. Yeah, and if you can't afford, you know, the more expensive you go, the better woven, you won't lose bristles and stuff like that. But um, I actually always buy, a set. these are very, very cheap brushes, mm -hmm. and I like to have them on hand. You almost just use them for one painting, and then you chuck them in the garbage, because um, 
just they get worn down quickly anyway. And there's things you can do to uh, kind of condition the brushes, you know, if you if you want to try to extend their life. But um, you have to, especially these little ones, they get worn down really fast, and you end up purchasing a lot. Yeah. More of those. I, I have these big ones for a long, long time because I don't use them as much. You use them to get the big strokes in and then you're done. And then yeah. you're down to your small brushes again for detailing. So maybe on a general level, if you come up to a blank canvas, what's the first thing you do to it for an oil painting? So the first thing you would do, and actually if... This is a big difference between watercolor and oil painting. On oil painting, you work from dark to light, thin to thick. And um, watercolor, actually, you work light to dark. You do your darks last. Hmm. So um, you don't always follow those rules, but that's a general, general rule mm -hmm. that. Um, so you try to get all of your values in, um, your darks. You do everything really, almost like silhouettes of something. You're not trying to get detail in at first. You're just trying to get the dark and the light spots. And then you work from there. And usually you try to make your lighter stuff have a thicker texture. And um, that's kind of the last thing you put in. Abstracts are a little bit of a different story, but um, for more uh, realistic drawings, that's the way the way it works. Okay. Do you have any works you want to show us? <laughs> I have I have a lot of paintings, um, a variety. Let's see, those are all children's. I do a variety. I do abstracts and landscapes. Um, is this a particular location? No. No, and actually this is that's a college painting as well. I've had it for a lot of years. So here's some of the landscapes. I would say my style is more of an impressionist landscape. I don't get super tight with my brush strokes. Um, Do most artists develop a style and stick with it? I would say it develops over time. Actually, Picasso was an excellent realist painter. Uh -huh. um, that's what they say you have to learn how to draw well before you can paint well. And, um, you know, once you have that foundation, then you can start to experiment and develop your own style. I don't think you have much choice in the matter. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of just how your brain processes everything and um, what comes, comes out over time. Mm -hmm. You won't know your style right off the bat. It's going to take a lot of, I would say, you know, I am 37 this year and I still, I'm starting to see a uh, some things that I think, okay, that are probably going to stick with me the rest of my life. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's been 30 years, and I, I've apprenticed with some other artists, and, um, you know, they'll tell you they're in their 50s or 60s, and well, there's, they'll say they're starting to figure it out. It's just a lifetime of a lot of work. There's 
So I, I was taught the traditional, uh, I would say the classical art form and some of my college work, you know, we just really worked with perspective, which actually I was a horrible class I thought, mm -hmm. but I ended up using that extensively with interior design. Mm -hmm. shading and value and human proportions. Um, average man is seven heads high. Yeah. And then I get into abstracts a lot for fun, just to have, to relax and yeah. to stop forgetting about all of the rules and everything like that. So, um, you know, here's, I like to play with abstracts to help me loosen up and remember the art is fun. <laughs> So, um, recreating children's drawings on the canvas. So people would send me their kids' drawings, and I repaint them in the color schemes hmm. of their bedrooms. It's kind of fun. So <laughs> there's some. So the kids would draw something like you guys do, maybe mm -hmm. in for school or just for fun, and send them to. Tana and she would paint them as a painting, right? Mm -hmm. so that's what gifts for parents that matched their room, and it was a lot, you know, a lot of fun. My son did this one, that's why I still have it. So it, it was just a pencil drawing. I chose the colors, but um, the rocket and the planets were his. That's really so. fun. <laughs> and remember, that's how I learned to draw is by imitating. I drawing those horses mm -hmm. that's so imitating is very easy for me and that's why I don't some artists have just one style they stick to mm -hmm. I have bounced around a ton because I can yeah so it's been kind of fun here's another landscape kind of looks like Wyoming doesn't it yeah Easily be somewhere here. That one was started in college and then I've added touches to it over the years. So you can see as you get closer, one thing I like about kind of impressionist or is once you get close it loses all of its detail. And you see broader general strokes. But then when you pull back, almost looks like a photograph. Kind of interesting, huh? They always tell you to stand back from your painting because if you're in there close, it, yeah, it doesn't look anything like when you back up. Yeah. Any other works you want to show us? Uh, all I have are um, which have been have started being great sellers over the years are from the line drawings. The line drawings, which I started as, as a way to finish a painting because a painting can take a very long time. This was a way I could kick something out, depending on the idea and whatever else. Um, I could do something within an hour or two hours, 
And I know that that shouldn't look like it takes that long, but it does. Especially just getting the idea. Um, because you have to have a really, really strong composition to make the line drawing hold, hold up on its own. So, I have a variety of these. Um, I sell online. I'm not, I was, I have some art in a gallery in Florida. I think it might have been destroyed <laughs> in <laughs> From Hurricane, the hurricane Matthew. We're still waiting word on that, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah. everything else I have been selling online. So I have these ready to go. So far I have not gotten into prints. Um, I don't have the capacity. It's just the originals? Yes. So one? I do. The bird? Yeah. All of, right now I'm selling all of my originals. That way it paces better. I can get it at a higher price. What's that one? And this one. The other one. This one. Yeah. It's just a figure. Oh, there you go. Yep. This guy is sleeping. I have a few dogs. They get in a lot of my line drawings. So that's it. And these are available, you know, when someone puts in the order. I, I have shipping supplies on the other side and I um, just send them out. And they've mm. gone all over the world. I've done. Uh, mostly the United States, but I've sent things um, to Australia and other places like that. So, so for any of these these kids that are interested in getting into art, what um, what advice or thoughts do you have for them? Um, always keep drawing. Never stop. Don't think you've gotten to a place where. You're going to have to kick out a lot of work, and a lot of the work is not going to be appreciated by people. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's an interesting time to do art because um, a lot of the galleries and things like that are struggling, um, and you can use the internet to sell your art. You know, it's, it's just kind of like any brick and mortar store right now. Um, you have the potential to reach anybody in the world, which we've not had that very long. Mm. And that's a really, really cool thing. I don't think I could do what I do in Wyoming without the internet. And so for all of the bad things that are said about it, it's my lifeline for my career and reaching out to other people. Mm. So um, I love the internet <laughs> and I love that I can, um, share art all over the world and um, do you have a website or an Instagram or something that the people can look at I have so my website is my interior design website mm -hmm. um, and it's just tanaallred.com that's all of my interior design I'm working on getting a art site set up on its own mm -hmm. I sell the art it's not my own website it's through Cherish, hmm. C-H-A-I-R-I-S-H, Cherish.com, mm -hmm. Saatchi, Art.com, that's S-A-A-T-C-H-I, Saatchi, and ArtPal. That's where I have the three places listed on online. And then... Um, so if they go to those three sites and type in Tana Allred, they'll find your work? Yeah, I think so. It's a big long address if you get the exact one. But you could put Saatchi, Tana Allred. It would come up. Cherish, Tana Allred. It would come up. Okay. Um, that's where all of my art is right now. And um, actually, Instagram is a very powerful... Sometimes I'll just post them on Instagram, which it's just Tana Allred. T-A-W-N-A-A-L-L-R-E-D. Okay. And um, some things sell before I even have to put them up. 
on those because someone will love them. Mm. And um, coming up, I have two big commissions that will be, um, I'm working with other interior designers. They're wanting them for their clients. And um, one of them is going to be like a, like a, almost like a wallpapery bird mm -hmm. scene that's going to go into a bedroom. And the other one's just going to be even more kind of an abstract landscape. And that's for one of my own interior design clients. So. Okay. Um, all right. I think we'll, we'll probably do a second field trip here about your interior design. But for this art field trip, any last comments or words? <laughs> <laughs> I guess it would be um, be really patient if that's something you want to do, but you also have the world at your hands mm -hmm. right now, and that's a really cool opportunity. So don't think just because you live in Wyoming and you're an artist and people think that's weird, it's okay, <laughs> there's another weird lady out here that's doing <laughs> art, and um, you can do it because of the internet, you can, you can live in Wyoming, get your hands on just your typing paper and just start sketching. Hmm. And um, it's possible now to do it wherever you want to be in the world. And lots of people are coming back to Wyoming to enjoy the lifestyle because of the internet and that they can work remotely. So. Yeah, wherever they want. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, Tana. Um, thanks for coming on this field trip, guys. We're going to do probably part two and talk to Tana some more about her interior design, which is part of her art world, but in a different way. And uh, I think you'll find that really interesting. So thanks for coming, guys. Bye.